Tuesday. I apologize in advance if you can hear the kids playing outside on the street. Um, I've been home all day and I was really busy with work. I had a lot of meetings today and it's been super quiet and it's now 6.30 in the evening and there's some kids who are riding what I'm guessing is a step right outside my house, up and down the pavement, and it makes so much noise. And I don't get it. It's almost dark. They've had all day, because they've all been home since three, but they choose to do it now. So, um, and I really have no other time to record this, so I am really sorry if you can hear it. It sucks, but anyway. Uh, today's case is going to be about the disappearance of Trevor Dealey. This, I chose to do this case because it happened in Ireland, and I mentioned this in the Amy Fitzpatrick case, that it is really rare for a murder or a disappearance to happen in Ireland, so it's always a really big deal. Um, so I really uh, thought, I only heard about this a few months ago because I didn't live here yet in, uh, in the year that this happened, in 2000, but... Um, but I found it really interesting, so let's get into it. So Trevor Dealey was 22 years old when he went missing on December 8th of 2000 in Dublin. He grew up in Nace, Ireland. He had three siblings, and he didn't really know what to do with his life right out of school. So he decided to take a computer course, and he absolutely loved it. Uh, this is what he wanted to do, and he eventually got a job with the IT department of the Bank of Ireland, and that is what ultimately took him to Dublin. On December 5th, he had just gotten back from a trip to Alaska. He had met a girl online. Um, actually, I think he met her on vacation when she was in Ireland, and they had been sending each other messages online, and he decided to go visit her, and he had just gotten back on December 5th from this trip. So on December 7th, which was a Thursday, he attended a work Christmas party. He had a great time with his colleagues. Uh, they bar hopped, which is very common in Ireland. You rarely spend the night in the same place. You always go to multiple pubs. Um, and at 3.25 a.m., he decided that he wanted to go home. Now, it was raining hard. It was a very windy night, and he decided to stop by the bank where he worked because it was really close by and he was going to go get an umbrella because um, there was a taxi strike that night so he had to walk home. He didn't really have any other option and he was going to go get an umbrella. Um, now when he got to work, there was a man working the night shift and he chatted with him for a while. Uh, Trevor then sent an email and they, um, they sat there for a while just drinking a cup of coffee um, with his colleague uh, and just, you know, chilling. And then at 4.02 a.m. he left the office. Now, the next morning he didn't show up for work and he didn't call in sick either. Now, this was not like Trevor to do. He had never just not shown up for work before. But given that the night before they had the Christmas party, he wasn't the only person that hadn't shown up for work, so they didn't really think anything of it. They decided to just let them off with it, and, um, you know, that was that. But when he didn't show up for work on Monday, that's when they realized something was wrong. Now, the problem with this is that he had been missing for an entire weekend, but nobody knew what happened to him, so that's three whole days of valuable searching time that was lost. Um, so he called his family, and his parents immediately came down to Dublin and went to his apartment, but he wasn't there, and his roommates weren't there either. So at this point, they realized that nobody knew if he even made it home from the party that night. So they alerted the police, and a wide-scale search was done, like the whole community got involved. As I mentioned, this is so rare in Ireland, so literally everyone whether they knew him or not, would get involved in this and search for him. They handed out flyers, they went into multiple pubs to ask if they'd seen Trevor, and they asked local businesses for their CCTV footage. His brother even took the exact walk from the office to his apartment that Trevor would have taken, um, but he couldn't find any of his belongings or any trace of him. So police 
police had gone to his office. They checked his computer to see if maybe there was something in the email that he sent. They talked to the co-worker that he'd spoken to that night, but there was no beneficial information found at his work. So then they went through CCTV footage and they found some really interesting images. So at 3.05 a.m., CCTV footage shows a man wearing all black approaching the bank. Now, the bank is like, it looks like a, like a big house, really. It's like a big brownstone house and it has a gate along it and in the very middle, or like it has a fence along it and in the middle there's a gate and it's what customers go through to go into the bank and then off to the side is a bigger gate that I'm guessing is like the parking lot I'm not sure but it's what employees would usually go through um, and I'm guessing it, it's a parking lot for employees to park so it's a slightly bigger gate but the distance between the two is like 20 feet because it's just one giant house so it's not a very big distance. Um, now the man is seen standing at the first gate and he stands behind a pillar so you can kind of see him but he's hidden for the most part from CCTV footage. He stands there for around 30 minutes with no umbrella and given the fact that it was raining he the fact the fact that he was standing there uncovered with no umbrella is just really weird um so at 3 34 a.m the man takes a call like he receives a call and takes it and steps out from behind the pillar and almost at that exact same moment trevor walks past him now he doesn't seem concerned about this man um, but as soon as he walks back by, the man turns around and follows him. And then, on CCTV footage of the other gate, you see a man in black running towards the gate and getting there before Trevor. So, either this man ran past him to get to the gate first, or there's a second man that was waiting by this gate. Now, when Trevor gets to the gate, he has a short conversation with this man, but he doesn't seem concerned. It looked like it was someone that he knew. And then he goes through the gate, closes it behind him, and goes into the building. And then the man just kind of stays outside, and then he walks across the street, and he disappears from CCTV footage, which is really strange, because if he had been standing there for 30 minutes, why did he suddenly just walk away? Um... Then around 4 a.m. you see Trevor on CCTV footage leaving the bank and then he heads down the road towards his home. At 4.14 a.m. he is seen on CCTV footage still on the way to his home. And then 30 seconds later, a man dressed in all black is seen on CCTV footage following Trevor. Um, now police can't determine whether this is all one man two different men, or possibly even three men, all working together. So they searched the nearby river thoroughly. They thought maybe if Trevor was drunk, he might have fallen into the water. And they brought in diver teams. They searched every piece of water that was nearby the area that he went missing in. But they didn't find his body or any of his belongings. So they then went through a piece of his walk home called the embassy belt so Dublin has a neighborhood that is pretty much all embassies and I've been there a good few times to go to the Belgian embassy it's really um it's really beautiful it's kind of considered the posh side of Dublin it's a pretty expensive area and all the embassies are basically housed in old brownstone houses they are gorgeous with really beautiful grounds around it um, and on the Tuesday, President Clinton was arriving at the American Embassy. Now, what happens when the American president travels is that his security team goes out a few days before and does a very thorough investigation of the area to do a safety inspection. And when they search it, they search everything. They look under manhole covers. They look through garbage cans. They search through bushes just to make sure that every inch of the area is safe. And on the one hand, 
that's good because they didn't find Trevor, so he's not there. But on the other hand, they could have easily destroyed evidence because Trevor had been missing the entire weekend before it was reported. And they searched during the weekend. Now, if they found, like, his shoe or his umbrella, they wouldn't have known that there was a man missing and they could have just thrown it out. So, we'll never know if some really vital evidence was destroyed that weekend. His sister said that she called him multiple times over the weekend and that it would always ring and go to voicemail after ringing. But that on Monday, it stopped ringing and just went straight to voicemail, indicating that his phone was on all weekend and then died on Monday. Um, so, they did entertain the idea that he committed suicide, they decided to dig more into his trip to Alaska, and it turns out that this girl had told him in many ways not to come visit her. She said that she would be too busy and that she wouldn't really have time for him, but Trevor decided to go anyway, and so police flew to Alaska and talked to her, and she said that she was very busy, she barely saw him. And that she made it very clear that she just wasn't interested in him. It seems that he was, like, in love or had feelings for her, but she didn't for him. And in the times that they were chatting online, she told him that very often, that she just didn't want him to come over. But he didn't listen and he went anyway. So, um, it sounds like he came back from this trip quite possibly with a broken heart. However... All of his friends and his roommates said that he would never have done that, that he didn't seem upset at all in the days after he came back. He was very excited, like aside from the fact that this girl uh, rejected him, he was still in Alaska and he had an amazing trip and he was making plans with people to tell them about it. In fact, that night when he was walking home from the party, he was, he had made a phone call to a friend and left a voicemail message to say that he couldn't wait to tell him about this amazing trip that he had. So he was definitely making a lot of plans for the future uh, in general, and that's not usually indicative of someone who committed suicide. And the most likely place to do that over there is by jumping into the water, and they didn't find him in the water. So they then turned their investigation onto foul play. Now, the man in black seemed to be following him all the way, and the area that he was walking through was very well known for having a lot of sex workers and for gang activity. Um, now, police never actually went to all the businesses to get the CCTV footage. It was his friends who did that. And back then, Everything was still recorded on VHS tapes because digital wasn't really a thing then. And so most businesses would record over the tapes every 24 hours or sometimes once a month, but that's like the maximum. So um, since he went missing for a whole weekend, a lot of the CCTV footage that was recovered by the friends was not current. It had been recorded over um, over the weekend and it, it wasn't like a lot of it was just lost. Now, in 2017, they decided to enhance the CCTV TV footage that they did have to see if they could finally identify this man in black. Now, this is where they basically spotted the second man. So, as I said, this one, this man was waiting at the first gate and it appears that he ran past Trevor to then show up at the second gate before him. But given the fact that it was a very short distance, he would have had to sprint past Trevor. And because Trevor was talking to this man at the second gate in a very calm way and seemed to know him, it's very unlikely that he wouldn't have found it suspicious if this man had just sprinted past him. So it seems like this was definitely a second person. And it's very possible that someone called the first man to let them know that Trevor was approaching or that someone was approaching. And that's the call he took. And then the second person showed up at the gate. So, um, now, 
two minutes after Trevor went into the building. So this man left and crossed the street, and then two minutes later, you see two men dressed in black standing at this second gate, just staring at the building. They're just staring at the bank. And in the distance, you see a third man in black standing on the other side of the street with an umbrella. Um, now, police said that they have found these men and talked to them and that it turns out they were both employees of the bank and that they cleared them. But like, why would two employees show up at the gate and just stand there if they were employees? They could have gone in. Um, and then it was a third man that was standing on the sidewalk. Now, um, a huge tip came in later on, and it was a person who said that he knew what happened to Trevor. He said that a very well-known family in the Kremlin area had come to him and told them that one of their family members, I think it was, well, it was a guy anyway, um, said that he killed Trevor by accident. This man, who was a very well-known criminal, approached Trevor after some sort of confrontation and beat him up, threw him in his car, and took him to a house and tied him up. Now, he said that he was just trying to scare him by waving a gun in his face, but the gun went off, and he accidentally killed Trevor. And then he panicked and decided to um, bury him under a drain. Now, police looked into the background of this man and found that he had a huge criminal record. But they searched the drain where the man said that he buried his body and they never found Trevor. And that's all the information there is in this case, so I'll get into some theories. Um, the first theory is that he was hit by a drunk driver and that they tried to hide it. Some people think that because there was a taxi strike going on that a lot of people were driving when they shouldn't have. And that, um, you know, he could have hit Trevor in the middle of the night and tried to hide it because they didn't want to get caught for drink driving. However, however, his family walked that way home multiple times and never found any skid marks. They never found any belongings. Um, you would think that, you know, maybe the umbrella would have flown somewhere or his phone would have flown somewhere because he had his phone in his hand. Um... And they didn't find anything. And plus, the, the only way, really, that a drunk driver would dispose of his body would be by throwing him in the river, and he wasn't found in the water. Now, um, the second theory is that he was taken by a gang to get some information about the bank. Um, he was an IT worker. He did do a lot with the computers there, and he could have, you know, helped them transfer money or get them passwords for some big accounts. Um... But the weird thing is, and it's kind of, it's the same with the three men standing outside the bank. Nobody knew that he was going to the bank. It's not like this was pre-planned and people were waiting for him specifically. He was at this party and he decided last minute to go to the bank to get an umbrella because it was raining. He could have told people there, but he wouldn't have told them an hour before. You know, he would have told them probably five minutes before he was leaving. So, nobody knew that Trevor was planning to go to the bank. So, it seems unlikely that a gang would have organized this not knowing where he would have been. Um, so, the third theory is that it's that these three men had something to do with it, which seems very likely. Now, if the two men were employees, on the one hand, I find it weird because they could have just gone in, but on the other hand, Trevor definitely seemed to know one of them, so I, I think it is plausible. Um, it could be, and this is just a theory that, that I found, um, it could be that they started working at the bank in order to be able to infiltrate it so that they could set up like a robbery, because what better time to do it when there was an office Christmas party and they knew nobody would be there aside from like one night worker, like I'm guessing it was a night guard. Um, so it could be that they started working at the bank in order to find out when the best time was to rob it, and that Trevor showed up unannounced to get an umbrella and completely ruined their plans. Um, there's two things to support this theory. One, he seemed to know the person he talked to because he didn't seem uncomfortable talking to them, and they were staring at the building after he went in. They could have been 
waiting to see if he would leave and then realizing that he wasn't because he was in there for half an hour they could have had to abort their plans and the man that he talked to could have gotten worried that Trevor obviously saw him there and that Trevor might you know I wouldn't say rat him out but might mention that he was there um, say that the, the, the bank robbery, robbery was successful or what happened at a later date Trevor could have said well actually on this one night I saw him standing outside the gate in the middle of the night you know it was a little bit suspicious so it could be that they were afraid that Trevor would rat them out and then they killed him um, now Trevor made a phone call on his way home he left as I said he left a voicemail for his friend to say that he had to tell him about his amazing trip now when police asked him about this he said that Trevor would never have done that he would never have called him in the middle of the night for something like that he would have just waited until the next morning so people have theorized that he knew he was being followed by this man in black and he decided to call someone to deter the person who was following him and a lot of people do this I just recently read an article about how many people, especially women, get into an Uber or Lyft and literally call someone and are on the phone the whole time until they get out because they feel uncomfortable on their own with a stranger. And a lot of people do this at night when they walk the streets alone. They call someone just so that if something happens to them, there's like audio proof of it or so people wouldn't do anything to them because they're on the phone so it could very well be that he was doing this to deter the person that was following him um, and then another theory is just that it was a random crime he walked through an area with a lot of gang activity and it could be that he just walked into the wrong place and that he was killed um, just because he was in the middle of gang activity um, again yeah not ruling this out, I think that's a plausible theory. I definitely think the three men have something to do with it. It just seems too strange that they were there. And I definitely think it's possible that they were robbing the bank and that he just accidentally, like, thwarted their plans by getting this umbrella. Um, which is so sad if you think about it. Like, if the taxi strike hadn't been on, he would have still been alive. You know, it's so sad. So, let me know your guys' theory. I'm really curious to see what you think about